Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have an unboxing today of something that I have been waiting to get my hands on for some time. It is Montelamar, uh, The Anvil of Fate uh, by series and game designer Adam Starkweather um, and Compass Games. Now this is not new. It's a couple years old at this point. Um, it is part of the company scale system, which is a system that I do like. Uh, you can see the CSS logo right here. Um, it is a relative uh, with some refinements of the GTS system. Um, and I like some of the changes that Adam has done with this. I actually did get a chance to talk to Adam briefly uh, at the Compass Expo, but not as much as I wanted. So Adam, if you're watching this, please reach out to me, artwolfslayer at gmail.com. Um, we're going to take a look at the contents of Montelamar today. And I will point out that we think at this point that when we finish our current table project, which is Europa War in the Desert, that this will be next. So. I am excited to bust this out finally. We picked this up, of course, at Compass Expo because I knew I was going, so I decided I was just going to wait uh, to grab it. And as I said, I have played a, a decent amount of GTS and have noodled a bit with CSS. And if you are interested in a comparison, uh, a, a good view in the system, please do check out uh, Nathan's channel at Wise Guy History. It's a very good channel, which you should be subscribed to anyway, um, and he did a pretty detailed analysis of CSS and GTS. So you have two ten-sided dice. You probably want more ten-sided dice than this, but they start you with two. There is a Compass Games catalog, which is probably a couple years old. Actually, not that old. It's 2020 holiday catalog, so it's a little bit old. Let's take a look at the contents of Montelamar. Now, it's it's a fairly large game. Um, more in terms, like GTS, uh, the the unit density is not super duper high, uh, but the the map footprint is pretty large. I think this is four or five maps. We're gonna find out here. All right, so just checking out the credits. Um, Adam Starkweather, game and series designer, developer Ross Mortel. Who, Ross was the designer of the first couple of games in the series, the uh, the Pacific Islands games. I wonder if there's going to be any more of that. Um, the graphic artist Antonio Pinar, um, and I really like the uh, the uh, the map art style here, which was uh, is reminiscent of GTS. Um, so the, here's the rule book. Um, it is 40 pages. Um, Matte finish, full color, pretty nice. Uh, this is, so 40 pages, yes, but this is not like an obscenely complicated game system once you actually start playing it. Um, it does take a while to explain, but we do have a lot of examples here and so forth. There is no series rule book, which I actually feel was a, was a, was a missed opportunity. Um, we have a rules of play and a scenario book. The rules are tailored to Montelamar specifically. Um, I feel like we'd have been better off with a series rule book. That way the series rule book could be iterated upon and you could just have a game specific rule book with the scenarios and the game specific rules. Um, and you wouldn't have to monkey with that. But uh, as it is, we've gotten, I think, and I think this was the fourth, um, might have been the fifth. CSS game. Now I don't own them all. I own the three Pacific Island ones and now Montelamar and the Little Land. Um, and um, the Third World War stuff does not necessarily interest me. So let's see here. Uh, there is a bibliography which is always nice to see. Now what, what, where this is, is this is in southern France as part of Operation Dragoon uh, where the Allies land in August of 1944 in southern France and start driving up. They face substantially less resistance than they did in Normandy, um, but that's because all the German forces are diverted to, diverted to Normandy at this point in part. Uh, but they do face um, substantial opposition in some places in that campaign. And I want to say that this is an attempted German counterattack. I think that's right. Uh, where there, there was a pretty big battle here. So, uh, scenarios. Let's take a look at the scenarios. Uh, scenario book is 60 pages? Close, 56 pages. Um, and it's full color as well, matte finish. I, I like the rule book stock here. Uh, we have... Okay, so it is a five map game and it's kind of one, two, three, four, five. Um, same map layout, I think, is. Yeah, maybe not. So I was going to say time for trumpets, but it's, it's, it's a big, pretty big footprint, right? Um, so, scenario one opening blows. Uh, the turns are, the day turns at least, are two hours here. So, uh, this is several turns long. 
Um, we do have setups. Uh, these aren't on cards. You'd really probably need to copy these to really use them as setup cards, which is how I would want to use them. Uh, but you could do that. And I don't know that the scenario books are available on Compass Games' website. Um, the rules should be. Opening blows strike to the east. This is, again, not an enormous scenario here. Uh, scenario 3, opening blows, 11th Panzer attacks. Uh, so this is a good chunk of August 22nd. And this is quite a bit bigger, and we get what looks like a significant SS division coming in. Uh, scenario 4, Task Force Butler stands alone. And this is three days, right? Uh, this is a bit of a meeting engagement. There are new forces coming in as, as the campaign progresses. Scenario 5 is... Uh, most of August 25th, and it's decent sized. This is decent. This may not look like it necessarily, but this is a decent sized scenario here. And you can see we have the 36th Infantry Division, 198th Infantry Division, German Infantry Division. Uh, I should be looking at map area too. So there's, this is a two map scenario. Let's actually go back and look at the early ones. One map scenario. So the first couple of maps here are one map scenarios, which is which is both expected and and I think really necessary for. Um, a game of this size, right? Five map game. I want some smaller scenarios to cut my teeth on it. If I'm if I'm unfamiliar with the system, um, the optimal CSS learning game at this point is probably Tinian. Um, but lots of folks won't enjoy playing the Japanese in those scenarios. So if you're going to solitaire it, I think that's that's great. Or if you just want it as a learning game, I think that's great. This would be much more interesting to play opposed. I. I think for some players, I wouldn't mind playing the Japanese. We can see that this is a big scenario right here. And then here is a campaign game. Okay. Which, as you can see, is fairly large. Scenario 8, the French save the day. So this is, an, this is a contrafactual scenario, it looks like. Um, which I'm completely cool with them including. Even though I'm not necessarily into that myself, um, as an exploration of the topic, I think it's nice to see. Okay, so here we have some play aids. These are on a pretty thick, uh, uh, safe satin finish stock. Um, this is the sequence of play. Now, I will tell you that <clears throat> I don't expect you to need to refer to this sequence of play once you have a few turns under your belt. The vast majority of things in this system happen in the action phase, um, and this is all preparatory stuff for that. So we also have the division. I'm going to call them divisions, even though they're not necessarily divisions. Um, displays, and these are set up alongside. So, so the footprint here is bigger than five maps. And we have, so here we have the 36th Infantry Division, the U.S. 36th Infantry Division, Task Force Butler. Uh, we have C.C. Sudre, which is, looks like some free French. Uh, we have for the Germans, the 338th Infantry Division and the 198th Infantry Division. More allies, 45th Infantry, 3rd Infantry. And you have a, a number of things that you end up putting on these displays. Units that are routed end up here. Um, if you have support weapons, they end up here before they are allocated to units on the board. Um, and then you will keep track of command and dispatch points uh, on the general records track. So 45th Infantry and 3rd Infantry for the Allies. Looks like 2nd SS Panzer Division. Um, and, or is it the 11th SS Panzer? It should be the 11th. Um, and the 189th Infantry Division. Uh, here we have another display for date, time, and weather, and you can see the two-hour turns, but then there's two night turns, um, and August 21st through August 29th, and of course this is 1944, we have a little bit of weather, there is a weather table, um, and here's the charts and tables. So I found that, you know, playing GTS for a week, that basically once you have the basic mechanisms and... Um, sequences down, uh, which doesn't take that long, that basically the entire game runs off this thing, where you got your combat tables and a few other tables on one side, and your TEC on the other side. It's 
quite an easy system to play, but it is a little bit different. There's some novel mechanisms in here, um, which of course are shared with GTS and, and frankly with the old um, West uh, at Victory Games Panzer Command, the Eric Lee Smith game, um, which I believe to be the first uh, chip pull war game in the modern sense. Now the maps. Maps are a matte finish, really rather nice matte finish at that. I prefer matte finish on the maps, um, even though I'm going to end up putting, you know, you'd end up putting plexi over these. Um, <clears throat> I really do think they are attractive maps. Um, Antonio uh, Pinar has done a fine job with these, um, and I think that's true of the other games in the series that I have seen as well. So I'm, I'm quite happy with the uh, with the maps. There is a center dot. The color of this, so the, the center dot is used for line of sight determination where that's necessary. You don't really have to do that that much, but you do end up doing it some uh, through the course of play. And the color of the center dot actually tells you what the terrain in the hex is. So there is no ambiguity about what hex, what terrain this hex is. I uh, wonder what this is. This looks like some kind of farmland or something like that. Something like that. So we've got. Let's see, five maps? Five of these maps. Uh, and these are all standard sized war game maps too. There's nothing nothing weird going on here. <clears throat> all right, so we have six counter sheets. These are on uh, Compass Games, uh, slightly older, slightly thinner um, white core stock. Uh, as I've said elsewhere numerous times, um, there are people who feel, feel that these are excessively thin. Um, I don't particularly care about how thin they are. They're not thin thin enough that it bothers me. Let me put it that way. So here we have a sheet of miscellaneous markers uh, disorganized and then you flip that on the back and you get a level two and of course there's DRMs here and the way the DRMs are laid out is actually quite neat um, and you have different disorganized markers for the the allies and the Germans. Um, you've got a few other markers here. Prepared assaults, foxholes, uh, no opportunity fire, on fire. A lot of the little bits and bobs are a bit different from CSS here. All right, so this is actually sheet one. And looks like uh, this is the... Th uh, so I don't want to use the word formations for the bigger formations because these smaller uh, groups of units are actually called formations. So these, this, this purple, I, let's see what, what it is. It's the 15th Infantry Regiment um, is this purple band right here. Uh, this would be the 30th Infantry Regiment in orange and in light blue, you'd have the 7th Infantry Regiment. And this is of course a US unit. Um, and I forget which, uh, which division this is. And then you have the various chits that you end up drawing from the cup to determine uh, who goes. I have done some stuff with CSS before. Um, it is a chip pull system, if you don't know, and I, I think I've certainly implied that several times so far here. There is, it's not just, hey, throw chips at chits in a cup and, and pick a chit and, and activate those. Uh, there is an entire uh, command and dispatch points economy that's going on behind the scenes um, that adds a lot of detail and decision making to it. So we have some more American units here. Uh, looks like German units. And the counter colors here represent the the divisions. Uh, again, they're not necessarily divisions, especially in the Pacific Islands games where they might be some kind of uh, Japanese naval infantry troop uh, group or something like that. A bunch more of the chits. Um, markers for dispatch points and command points. Uh, looks like we've got more Germans, definitely more Germans. And then more Germans. There's quite a few Germans here. I think the narr I don't know. I don't know that much about this battle, but I think the narrative here is that uh, it, it is a German, a sustained German attack that they, the Americans historically uh, repelled. So this has been a look, uh, a slightly longer than I planned. Look at Montelamar, the Anvil of Fate. This is part of the Liberation subseries, which I don't think has a volume two yet. I hope to hope we get to that soon. Um, of the company scale system from designer Adam Starkweather and Compass Games. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to help support our Wolf Slayer, please do check out the links in the video description to the Patreon, the merch store, and the Ko-Fi. Please do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, happy wargaming.